People who cater to the super rich, what things have you seen? I used to work for a billionaire Russian family as a tutor for their daughter. One day we're in her room studying and suddenly she yells dad is home and runs to the window. She'd heard a helicopter and knew it was about to land on the lawn. My dad's client bought a whole block of houses to build theirs. It is so wide that they installed a moving walkway like the ones at airports. I briefly worked with one of the top Saudi Arabian crown princes in the 80s. He would buy out the top 3 floors of the best hotels, 4 seasons etc. 2 floors were for maids help security, top floor was for the royal family, once it was only the prince and his 3 wives. Crazy crap. My brother dealt with many of their jets. One had a full on surgery room and there was a guy who traveled with him at all times to be his organ donor. I wish I was making this up. A friend from high school worked a few years as a deckhand on yachts in the Mediterranean and he said he once jumped in to get a customer's bag and got tipped 4000 euros. He also observed actual bricks of coke brought onto P. Diddy's yacht. I'm just starting out as a deckhand and I'm excited. I am an art student working as a gardener. We work in one of the wealthiest areas in my country. Some customers are really eager to show me their collection of artworks that they have hanging on their walls once they find out that I study it. I remember one time standing in a bathroom with my dirty gardening clothes and there was a Picasso above the toilet. My dad works in shipping and has a lot of friends who have worked on super yachts. In the 90s one of his mates got a call up to bring the yacht of a particular Australian media tycoon billionaire, not that one, from Sydney to New York, with instructions to be anchored in a particular bay at an exact time with a lunch spread for 50 people ready. So they got there and set up the food. The guy never showed up. Turns out he was having a rich dude party in a building overlooking the harbor and wanted to be able to point down and say that's my boat. He wanted the lunch just in case he decided to take his rich friends down to his yacht, but he didn't feel like it that day, so all the food got wasted and they sailed back to us without seeing him. Worked at a restaurant where a few of the regulars were the children of billionaires. I told my parents that my tuition costs $500,000, a student, from China, in America I overheard after being asked how she has so much money. Another time I was serving a table I was asked to bring a tray of 60 patron shots, $600, for a 19 year old student. I must have had an incredulous look on my face because his only response to assuage my concern was my father owned diamond mines in Africa. Saudi guy I went to school with had a $200,000 a month allowance from his family. Worked graveyards as a valet at an ultra luxury boutique hotel. It's quite shocking how some of these people live and you'd never have a clue by just looking at them on the street. One weekday night I was asked at 2am by a guest to bring around his Bentley. Regular looking dude came out with a backpack, got in and left. Not 30 minutes later the same dude pulls up in a Ferrari and now has a briefcase instead of backpack. Skip ahead an hour and the same guy orders 5 shot glasses to his room. I go up and it's 2 guys in robes and 2 naked ladies on the couch. They have lines of coke and booze on the coffee table. They tip me 50 for the shot glasses and I leave. 2 hours later, just as the sun was rising, the 2 guys come out together in suits looking like they were heading to the office. The ladies left shortly after. Obviously drugs and escorts were nothing new but the car swap middle of the night was a bit strange. It was for the girls. Sorry, this is a two-seater. A friend did some work on Sylvester Stallone's home. Apparently there's a ton of statues and art of himself, some of which are naked and very well endowed. His house is for sale. You can see it in the real estate videos. Super fucking weird. There is lots of it. I went to a New England prep school for high school on a full ride sports scholarship. There were a decent amount of foreign national students, mainly from Asia, that came from extremely wealthy families. One of those students' parents bought him a brand new BMW 5 Series, fully loaded, when he got his license our junior year. When we graduated a year later, he was going back to Korea and obviously couldn't take the car, so he gave it to his best friend. Kid got an $80k car at 17 years old, just for being good friends with the right guy. I'll never forget that. I was same as uni prep school there for sports. First day of school, move in day, two separate kids arrived via helicopter. Made my journey on the Peter Pan bus that day feel like a true poor boy. 
I used to do pool and spa maintenance in my 20s. I worked on one property with a mountainside, 10 bedroom slash 14 bath mansion, with a saltwater pool, tennis courts, guest mansion, and a servant's house that was 4 bedroom 5 bath. The property had so much more stuff, but that isn't the crazy thing. I worked on this property for 2 years, year round, 5 days a week, and not a single person was ever there. The middle aged, single woman that owned it lived in a city about 4 hours away and just didn't come to the property, because she was so busy with work. A multi 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 million dollar compound, just empty, all the time. Finally, after 2 years, I got a call from my boss on my day off. He asked if I could go to the house to put some pool floats away. He apologized, because it was my day off, but said the owner would pay me $500 to go put them away. I was confused as to why there were even pool floats out anyway, because nobody was ever there. But I figured frick it, $500 for 10 minutes. I show up to the house and the woman's adult children were staying at the house with about 10 plus kids between them all, and they were having a massive pool party cookout. I awkwardly walked up and said to one of the parents, sorry, it must have been a mistake, but I was told to come put pool floats away, but you're obviously here so I'll leave, presumably the woman's adult son said, oh, no, we're getting ready to leave, you can take them then he instructed the kids to push them towards me, I literally grabbed one in a tube float and four pool noodles, brought them 10 feet into the pool house, and put them away, I, confusedly, said they were all set and went to leave. The son thanked me and handed me a folded mass of $20 bills. It was $400. I was expecting $500 from my boss for payment, but I figured $400 cash was still overpayment, so I didn't mention it. The next day at work, my boss gave me $1000. I told him the son had already paid me $400, which was fine. He said the son told the woman how great a job I did. So she wanted to pay me $1000 instead of $500 and the $400 was a tip from her son. For 10 minutes of work, she actually called my boss the next day to ask if she should reimburse me for gas, since it was 15 minutes from my house. I told him that I was all set. They seem a lot more generous than most of the other stories. I had a classmate whom's father or mother was filthy rich from family money can't remember but they and he were amazing people. In uni this girl in class who was really nice but also came from a poor family dropped her macbook. She worked 60 hours a week for 3 months in the summer. He just came up, gave her his macbook, and said he would just get a new one after school and his parents wouldn't care. Pure generosity there was no tiktok movie or karma whoring going on. He was a stellar dude spending his parents money but only on stuff for other people and in a nice helpful way. He also gave all the guys in class a suit for graduation. Lots of the people were talking about renting one and stuff and he told everybody he knew a place to rent real nice suits. We all went there and we all rented a suit for 100 euros or so everything included and when you went to return it we found out they were all paid for by this dude. He was like renting a suit is stupid, but buying a suit is expensive now you got best of both worlds. Last thing I heard he bought like 10 PS5 from scalpers and sold them for retail to kids in the neighborhood. Frick I should have stayed friends with him. This was ages ago. I worked in a DVD store a woman came in with 5A4 pages, double sided of movie titles and just asked me to fetch what we had. I ran about and collected DVDs and Blu-rays close to 1k worth. I asked what they were for, she was a PA for a billionaire and getting then for his yacht. I saw Beckham, English football player, take DVDs from S store I worked at. He just grabbed them off the shelf and hardly looked, he filled several baskets. A woman who owned a small private jet business told me one time someone paid them to fly their dog, by itself, to NY for about $45,000 for some training. No other passengers. It's silly to imagine an untrained doggo trying to manage at the baggage claim. I used to work for a company that modified aircraft for really rich people. I'm talking 747S, not Gulfstreams. This company had made several aircraft for this one customer, who I was told had purchased a new one solely because his spiritual advisor had told him that one of his current planes was bad luck. He still let his wife use it for her personal travel. 
to me. One of the most exquisite features of these planes wasn't the gold plated everything, or airwood veneers, it was the silk carpet. That stuff cost over $1000 per square foot and feels like walking on a bed of angel feathers harvested in the most inhumane way possible. Granted, these guys don't deck out the whole plane, just their personal areas. The aft third is usually reserved for stuff and such and is more like a fancy economy class. But yes it'll cup it. Comma one of his current planes was bad luck. He still let his wife use it for her personal travel. I guess it's cheaper than a divorce. I tutored a wealthy 5 year old. I got paid good money to spend an hour drawing and coloring and playing with this kindergarten but all in French. He had been to more places in the world by 5 than I'll ever go to in my whole lifetime probably. The best part of the job were the perks, though. They would take me and my so out to dinner at fancy restaurants and pay the bill no matter what it was. They would invite us over to eat some delicacy they prepared. Wife was Chinese Vietnamese. Husband was Indian. And they'd always have some house guests staying with some crazy resume. For example. One time they had a diplomat for the Netherlands there to do business. They had houses in my city and in San Francisco and would fly there all the time. They invited me on several occasions but I never had time to go. I also befriended and stayed with the daughter of Russian oligarchs who lived in Paris. The mom was a famous writer and the dad did something in business. Their grandfather was a famous Soviet writer and so in general they lived a very cultured life. They lived in the richest part of Paris called Neuilly sur Seine and had houses in the Alps, Crimea and Moscow. The crazy part, or rather sad part, was that she only had a few options for a career. She could be a doctor, a lawyer, or a businesswoman. Their son was lucky enough to study at the Geneva Conservatory but that was only because he was really talented. In this family, if you didn't have a natural artistic talent you only had those three career prospects to choose from. I had the impression that she was rather depressed about how limited her options were and how much pressure was put on her to succeed. I became personal friends with my boss and his wife, super nice people. The wife turned out to be an heiress and would buy me whatever I mentioned, like in passing during a conversation. I learned gifts were how she was raised to show love. I've trained myself to only talk about things I already own, unless I find something useful she might like and suggest it for her. I did IT work for a tiny little private company like the owner, his brother, and me. Guy called because his new PC wouldn't turn on and it's like 3pm he was 100% willing to pay for me to drive 5 hours one way to get it working today because he wanted to play games today. Ok so 5 hour road trip one way and the address is this huge freaking mansion 100% thought I was in the wrong place. Use the intercom at the gate and nope this is the place. Guy and his wife are really cool and the dude had built his own gaming rig. It was absolutely over the top. I had never even laid eyes on hardware that expensive before. He never turned the power switch on his Suan. He paid the base rate of $1400 for me to come out there to flip a switch I also installed his graphic drivers but that was technically free. And then gave me $5000 cash as a tipple because he was excited to play League of Legends on his new PC. There's something hilarious about having a super expensive battle station decked out with everything one could need, and then using that to play League of Legends. None of the games that have crazy hardware requirements and offer crazy graphics. He went with the game that's known for running on a toaster. It's good for him. Was invited to a Christmas dinner while I lived in Seoul by an extremely wealthy Korean family. Very nice family but I think in hindsight they wanted to show their friends that they had foreign friends like me. Wife had everything catered and the home professionally decorated. It felt like we were in a department store. Multiple Christmas trees, a working train set, staff handing out appetizers on plates etc. It looked like she studied Christmas movies from the USA and copied everything. Dinner is served on a comically long table with two huge oven roasted turkeys and all of the trimmings. They looked perfect. I was later told that Koreans don't like turkey and were just for decoration. They would be thrown out later. We ate Korean food. The family said I could take a turkey home and that the caterer would drop it off with anything else I wanted. As a Korean, I've never heard anything more Korean. When it comes to the richest of them anyway, the gap between working class and those turkey wasting kinds is astoundingly huge. Have been working for the super rich for some time. Craziest thing I've seen. Brand new 90 meter multimillion pound. 
GBP. Yacht was built in Netherlands. Maiden voyage to Antibes in France. Owner came on board and left after a few hours. Next week we get sent to Genoa, Italy, where all the bathrooms on board were ripped out and upgraded. That doesn't sound like a big deal but I'm talking about brand new marble sinks, showers, floors and lobbies all crowbarred out chucked in skips. Tons of brand new polished marble bind. New marble colors and patterns arrived in the weeks following. There's feed me money, there's frick you money and there's it's not even a thought money. I build these ships. One time the owner didn't like the marble in his Turkish bathroom, so they pick new marble and rebools the room. Owner comes in, check the new look, doesn't like it and the story starts back again. Like 150k in marble, dumped out, twice. Used to be a housekeeper for some of the wealthier people in my city. The best thing I have ever seen is the wife of a rich guy or something of that sort had custom suits of armor made for her cats. She had them displayed along with tiny suits of armor for mice. I used to work for an Arab billionaire's son. A daddy's money guy. Terrible garbage human being. Once saw him spend $16,000 on a wallet. Was a fancy one with little gold spikes on it and stuff. He had shoes with gold on them. I remember one year for his birthday he received like 30 plus cakes. Big fancy cakes and he told us to leave them on the floor in the hallway outside his room. We walked by those cakes every day for two weeks waiting for instruction. After the two weeks we were told to throw them away. Was a boyfriend of a girl from an obscenely rich family. The sister used to have the nanny, who was sleeping with the husband. But that's another story. Fly to Paris in their G550 to buy the newest MS bag so she could show it off a few days before it went on sale in the US. When rich people want to buy a Jaguar in the UK they get assigned a special salesperson who is incredibly knowledgeable, they meet in a special fancy office, and special arrangements can be made. This was my friend Chris job, he had access to things that a normal Jaguar salesperson wouldn't have. Like he could ring up the manager of the factory for special requests level of access. Well a Saudi price wanted to buy this new Jaguar that had been released. So they met up and spent a full day spessing the Jaguar out. I believe the final price was something like 125k for the vehicle. Then came the decision for color. At the time the factory had 16 different color choices for this model. The prince asked if he could sleep on it as it was getting late and almost time for dinner prayer my friend Chris says of course and they set a time to meet the new morning. The next morning the Saudi price is like I figured out an acceptable solution to my color dilemma to which Chris goes and what would that be the Saudi prince goes I'll order one of each color. And my friend Chris is like oh well of course. They quote delivery time. Saudi prince was fine and asked for his options and was presented with ocean travel options to which the prince said what about air cargo Chris thinking maybe they'd do one or two by air cargo and the rest by boat. The prince was like no I want all 16 vehicles loaded on a plane and flown to Saudi Arabia. So that's the story on how 16 of the same Jaguar with different colors ended up being flown to Saudi Arabia all in the total cost was around 2.5 million. Please note the prices should be pound symbol not dollar sign. It's weird that when your story mentioned 125,000 for the car, I was like, that's pretty expensive. But when you said 2.5 million for all 16 to be purchased and to get to Saudi Arabia, I thought, that's not bad at all. I used to pet it. I remember a rich person asking me to pet it their cat. There was a lot of TVs, in almost every room. The weirdest was the bathroom. Sorry, cat bathroom. There was a TV playing cat cartoons, an overly fancy litter box and paintings of cats. Tell me about the overly fancy litter box. I'm a driving instructor and one group rented the track to drive their supercars for the day. At the end of the day they all partnered up and got into the cars to leave. After they were gone we realized that they had forgotten their Lamborghini Aventador at the track. That was the tip. Some extremely wealthy people I have been around have a more acute sense of their own time and mortality, leading to impatience. Like they understand how awesome their lives are and therefore how short they feel. I knew a guy whose vintage yacht broke down before summer so he bought another one strictly for that upcoming summer. His reasoning was he likely had 20 full health summers left in his life and didn't want to spend one of them without a boat considering he had the means to. Honestly can't argue with that logic. I am beginning to feel the awareness of being able to count the healthy years left and I'm not mega rich. 
Must be amazing to know you can pack those remaining years full of wonderful and wild experiences. My wife's aunt and uncle were busy the entire day of their 25th anniversary and returned home at about 2100 hours. Decided that the kids needed a bit of fun and booked a private jet to Moscow. They live in Paris and spent a week there. Money gotta love it. I've worked with some fairly wealthy people in the developing world. More or less new money. People who have been successful with some business venture or other. Overall, they're a bit out of touch with the realities of the world. I used to think that they were a bit naive too. Because I saw a lot of other people taking advantage of them outright robbing them. Over time, I realized while that's not untrue, it's more complicated. They did fail to notice a lot of uncollegiate activity on the part of the people they hired. But not all of it. What they did notice, they wrote off as the cost of finding people they could trust with projects that were actually important to them, and work with for years. So yeah, you could overbill them for a few thousand bucks once or twice, but if you worked hard and produced results instead, you could bootstrap your whole business to the next level with just them as a client. Eventually, I realized they valued trust a lot more than they valued money. They made their money with fairly long term, high risk, high reward ventures running in parallel. For example, research. So it all makes a little more sense now. I know plenty of rich useless people too. But, not very well. A lot of wealth is simply inherited in Asia. Cash flow is a really difficult thing here. Some people think they're important because they're born rich and act like fools. They do some pretty wild stuff. But I don't stick around to hear about it. Nothing too fancy but I used to help build multi-million dollar homes about a decade ago. One couple, neurosurgeon and dentist, had an office with one of those bookcase doors leading under the stairs. They stored their surround sound equipment and a safe in there. Another house had a very micromanager-esque woman as the owner along with her husband. She would regularly come to the site and order the workers around while the foreman sighed and rolled his eyes at her. At one point he had to order her off the site because she was being a safety hazard to his workers. I remember this couple also has a creepy setup for their kids, two bunk beds on either side of a wall for the kids, and both rooms led to a bathroom facing the road with a big bay window right next to the tub. So essentially, any person driving or walking past, or any neighbor could just look over and see these kids taking a bath. My dad used to do this as well. One he loves talking about is a house that had a water slide going from their third story bedroom to their pool. I worked for UPS for a hot minute as a driver helper and got to see some interesting things. The one driver had the rich of the rich route the mansions worth tens of millions around the Ann Arbor, MI area. The Ford Mansion, Lloyd Carr, the one recent guy for Michigan football that I'm forgetting that also worked for Little Caesars. Edit, the name I was forgetting was Dave Brandon. Anyway I got to see Dave Brandon's mansion it was gated, deep in the woods, and absolutely huge. The driver, a 33 year UPS veteran, told me these guys were these huge mansions like this. They don't live there by themselves. Sometimes don't live there at all. They move their entire extended families in there. Parents, sisters, brothers, aunts, uncles, cousins, etc. And they all live off the rich guy's dime. Ordering whatever they want whenever they feel like it. I think we delivered 30 or 40 packages there that one day. Second story from the same day and with the same driver, we delivered to a smaller, but still huge, house with an extremely long and wooded driveway. The driver was cursing about how much he hated these people because they always parked this huge butt boat in the only possible turnaround point in the driveway. So he goes in backwards and floors IT. Maybe 40 miles per hour backwards, about 250 yards of bends, straights, and he drove it absolutely perfectly, never driving off or missing the driveway. We get to the house and he needed a signature. He handed me the package and said he'll get the signature and just hand them the package and we'll go. Well, we get to the door, and this may be late 40s or early 50s man, kind of a Rick Moranis George Costanza type of build, short, extremely thick glasses, balding, but very skinny build. He's standing in the front door with a lab looking dog on a leash. The driver says, good evening we just need a signature and we'll be on our way. The guy says, number, I can't I have to take my dog out first. 
This freaking guy was fully prepared to make us stand there and wait for his dog to do whatever business before just signing his name and letting us drop the package by his door. The driver said, no we just need your signature, and we'll be on our way and you can walk your dog. But the guy said fine and took the 2 seconds it takes to sign your name and we dropped off his package and left. That left an impression on me. That guy valued our time so little it was worth less than his dog's crap. Like he was in his own world. And we weren't delivering 300 stops just before Christmas. My great uncle was very well off. He did not have a guest house. It was a guest mansion. Separate from his mansion. In case his kids dropped by. This does not include the Olympic sized indoor pool. That was a separate building. He bought a cannon. He used it to shoot the mountain behind his house. He shot brand new special bowling balls out of it. They cost 100 bucks per ball. Comma he bought a cannon. He used it to shoot the mountain behind his house. He shot brand new special bowling balls out of it. They cost 100 bucks per ball. It saddens me that I'll never achieve even a fraction of this level of success. My partner once helped build a $350,000 pergola, built from I wanna say something like mahogany imported from Fiji because they couldn't source solid beams from anywhere else, and we're in the middle of the Midwest. It was then painted because the color didn't suit the homeowner. I still sometimes think about the fact that our beautiful historic home that we're lucky enough to own was still over $100k cheaper than this person's glorified outside stick fort. Painting over that beautiful wood must have been soul crushing. I worked at a resort and marina that dealt with high end boats. From mega yachts to brand new cigarette boats. Always assume the quiet dude with the stained shirt is the owner of the performance boat. Never expect tips from mega yachts. The most narcissistic guests were always surgeons. The angriest guests were lawyers. No offense to attorneys, I am one. The richest were in construction and commercial real estate. The best tippers were guys entertaining their side pieces on their boats when you know their actual wives. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.